it's always strange hearing a bio about yourself, right? I am just a kid from the Bronx who was afforded opportunities beyond my wildest dreams to be able to contribute and give back to the people that I love. So I'm grateful for this opportunity to be before you today. But I got to say, when, when you walk in and you hear that song, Pomp and Circumstance, it gives you, gives you some chills, right? Makes me think of one of two things, Macho Man Randy Savage, for those of a certain age, in graduation. So let me first thank Dr. Heath and the SUNY College of Optometry for this uh, auspicious honor and, and Chancellor Stanley and all of the faculty and staff here. I want us to understand something, folks. Any good legislator worth their salt, any good doctor worth their salt knows that you are only as good as your staff. You are only as good as your team. If you are a basketball fan, you can score 50 points a game, but unless you're playing defense, you're not gonna win. So I wanna say thank you to the faculty and staff of this incredible school for the work that you do. I wanna tell you, I truly appreciate you. But, but graduates, how, how are y'all feeling today, right? Like this is, I, 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 I know they tell you like, you know, you get, the, you get the email, please do not deviate from this. I need you to stay in this row. I, I get it. But how excited are you? It's been four years. It's been a long journey. It, it, it's been something that, you should be incredibly proud of yourselves. And, and it's my sincere hope that I deliver a message to you that's worthy of this invite. Now, when I heard class president song when she was speaking, it reminded me that 10 years ago, the last time I wore regalia such as this in, in, in terms of a speech, I was the uh, student speaker at CUNY School of Law's graduation. And it was around certain uncertain social times around the tragic killing of Trayvon Martin. And I spoke about the deep irony of me being hooded as an attorney when a black man was shot and killed for nothing other than wearing a hood. And I think about that juxtaposition about society and class and, and, and how it is to be in this space. And I want you to understand this job is deeper than just vision. Actually, we're gonna talk more about vision soon. Part of the reason that I'm here is because of the work that my staff and I have been able to do to accomplish the legislation that Dr. Heath spoke about. Now, you know, initially sponsoring the bill, I, I, I did not know how important this piece of legislation was. One would say my eyes are now open to it. And in the New York State Senate with 61 eyes, the bill passed overwhelmingly because they understood the work that this would help your profession and would help the people in the great state of New York. The eyes had it so you can take care of our eyes. And it's my hope, my sincere hope, that the work that we've accomplished in the state legislature makes your job easier. But it's not about easy. It's about more beneficial. It's about what will benefit your patients. Now, public institutions like SUNY are incredibly important. As uh, was mentioned in the bio, I am a public school kid, K through JD. Um, every level of education has been through a public school, so I understand and appreciate the value of public education. Um, I, I share in your joy of being a SUNY alum. We are part of a very special network, folks. SUNY of College of Optometry is a leader in education and research and patient care. And I must say that you've taken major steps in the last few years to address the inequalities and disparities that face our communities. So you look, over a decade ago, um, there was very limited Latino students and 1.3% black students. The incoming class of 2024 will have 9.2% Latino and 8.2% African American. Significant leaps and bounds. But you know, I was always told, you can't be what you can't see. And if people in our communities, whether you're black, Latino, or Asian, or anything, if, if people don't see that they can be something, they won't come to schools like SUNY Optometry. They won't even apply. They won't click the browser window. Back in my day, we didn't have the browser window. We had to send the application in, you know, regular. But now they won't, they won't even click on the FAFSA fee waiver. They won't even do that unless they can see somebody in their community that they look up to that is doing the job. Diversity in medicine is critical, folks. 
It's not just about your eyes. It's about the overall vision. It's all about the social determinants of health. If you can't see where you're going, you won't get there in more ways than one. Now, doctors from racial and ethnic backgrounds that are typically underrepresented in medicine are significantly likely more to practice in those communities where they don't see us, where they don't speak our language. And guess what? They start coming to the doctor. They start having a return on that investment that we've made in our society. Talk about being seen when they see us. I don't know if you've seen that documentary. Sometimes it's difficult to be seen when you're from where I'm from. When you're from the Bronx, when the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has ranked the county 62 out of 62 counties in overall health outcomes, sometimes it's hard to see the forest through the trees, but we persevere. Quite frankly, if you're from the Bronx, it's in your DNA. Literally, it's on the motto, it's on the flag, Nekede Malis, it comes from the Aeneid. It literally means yield not to evil. If you ever read the Aeneid, the poem by Virgil, you know that the next line is said, contra al dente orito, which means advance all the more boldly against it. That's what you're here to do. You're gonna help somebody see clearer in so many ways. You're gonna make someone see the value in doing what you do every day. You're gonna help someone read clearer so that they can go to school and excel. You're going to give someone the confidence to put those glasses on. You know I didn't wear mine today, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that they can participate in work or school because they're clearer in what they see. But most importantly, you're going to change the world. There's a kid right now, somewhere in this state, in this country that you're going to run into. She's going to see what you're doing. She's going to be inspired by it. She's going to become a doctor of optometry just like you. But the beautiful thing is that you, you'll never meet her. That's the true test of leadership, folks. It's very easy for us to do things for our friends, for our cousins, for our next door neighbor. True leadership is being able to impact the lives of individuals that you have never met and you never will meet. You're going to be able to do that with this degree. Talked about basketball before big basketball fan. The Knicks, we're going to be all right one day. <laughs> now, much like the court vision exhibited by the world's best point guards, you are now going to be able to help people see the floor 10 steps ahead. We got to talk about real vision, Dr. Heath. Real vision is knowing Aravella Simotis with, that, with the honorary doctor is one of the best things that you could have done here. Vision is sometimes about seeing what others can't see. Arella is one of my favorite people, not just because she's a dynamic legislator, an intelligent, kind soul, um, a dynamic wife and mother. It's just because she's one of the best people you're ever going to meet because she cares. She saw, she saw me as an equal when I was a mere staff member in the state assembly. She's treated me the same from when she met me then to now. She reached out to me when I had COVID to check in. Sometimes it takes somebody outside of your direct orbit to see things that you can't see or quite frankly don't want to see. And so many other legislators and legislative staff members, we're grateful to you for giving us sage advice, firm but sage advice. I'm grateful to your kindness in allowing me to see that I can be an elected official. Chancellor Stanley, you mentioned the phrase digging deeper. It's about knowing that generational health disparities aren't going to be solved because of this speech, because of one consultation. But it's always something deeper beyond the surface. Those of us who are Encanto fans, we know Luisa's pressure beyond the surface. We owe it to our further, we owe it to our fellow person to see that in them, but you know, they didn't want to talk about Bruno. But in reality, they didn't understand him until they spoke to him and understood his perspective that he had no malicious intent. Yes, it was her wedding day, but he didn't mean to put the clouds in the sky. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to read the whole story. Unfortunately, this is a nation of headline readers. You've got to read the footnotes. 
And I'm going to tell you, what if I told you that I took my kids through five municipalities to get them to summer camp last year? You would probably say, wow, he's a father of the year. And guess, while I might be, I want you to dig deeper and I want you to ask where I went. I live in the Bronx. I drove through Mount Vernon. I drove through Pelham, Pelham Manor in New Rochelle. I was there in 15 minutes. Dig deeper. Ask questions to your patients. Now, graduates, I get to salute you again. I mean that in a real way. Be proud of what you've done. This is an accomplishment of a lifetime. The culmination of your hard work is today. Now, over 2,400 hours of clinical work and that doctors of optometry are considered the primary providers of eye care, providing treatment for ocular diseases. Where did I get that? I got that from your website, right? <laughs> right? No Sherlock Holmes expedition, no major fine fact, uh, you know, fact finding expedition. That's easy to see. But the work that you've done, I can't see that. These statements are all available to the public about you, what you do, but what you've done over the last four years, you know here. You hold it in a very special place. Most importantly, your family and your loved ones, they know the struggle. Those of us who serve public servants, and yes, you are public servants, whether you work in government or not, in this space, in this time, you are a public servant. Your family serves right along with you. So to the families, thank you so much for supporting these amazing doctors. Thank you. Now as graduates of this institution, it's your vocation now to ensure that the vision of individuals that you come into contact with is preserved or improved. Simple enough in theory, but let's talk about vision again. The iter original iteration of what I wrote down had no Buffalo or had no Texas in it. What do we see? What can we expect? Today was the first day I got to drop my kids off at school since the, the shooting in Texas. And I gotta say, it was a lot. My daughters are seven and five, well beyond the wildest dreams of what I think that I could accomplish. It is my job to make them better. But can I protect them? As a father, you, you, you uh, as a parent, you, your number one job is parent. I love being a state senator from the 36th Senatory District, and if any of my constituents are here, no disrespect intended, my, my job is dad first. Anxiety, pain, sadness, but you know what my community did today? My community was walking a little bit stronger and prouder because we can accomplish this together. The real vision in life is being able to see that we are better together. Talk about contact lenses. The only way that we overcome hate is with contact with each other. Contacting each other to say that we love each other. Staying in contact with family members and making contact with people who live different lives from us. It makes the difference between love and hate. It's contact. Tolerance and acceptance are fine, but love is better. You can look at everything you want, but until you really see, we're all going to continue to suffer. Much like the transition between sometimes transition lenses and contacts and glasses. Uh, it's natural to change your perspective on things depending on the situation. I have a feeling and I have a saying. Depending on where you are, you may have to code switch. We all know what code switching is. You modulate, you, in the New York State Senate, I have to walk into the chamber. I must have a jacket on. I have a tie on as well. That's not specifically in the Senate rules, but you must have a jacket on. That's called code switching. But you know what I never do? I never soul switch. You can code switch, but you can't soul switch. The core of who you are must remain intact throughout your professional endeavors. I need you to look deep within yourself and remember why you did this. Why are you going to do this? Why are you going to be the best at what you do? J. Cole famously said, there's beauty in the struggle, ugliness in the success. Feel that beauty. Feel that beauty and that struggle that you've done. As I close, I leave you with a phrase 
that encapsulates the times that we're in. It is a phrase called Ubuntu. Ubuntu. It means I am because you are. Quite literally, my fellow brothers and sisters, I am because you are. The sooner that we realize it, beyond the space of this graduation, beyond the halls of Gotham Hall, beyond the city of New York and the state of New York, the quicker that we realize it, the better we'll, the quicker we'll get to where we are. I am because you are. Congratulations.